So proceeding on to the next question, P and Q leave the same point traveling in the same direction, right? So that means uh, P and Q, P and Q, okay? They start from the same point, okay? And the graph of the velocity time for Q is this, okay? So, and the graph of velocity and time for P is this, okay? So we have to find the distance between P and Q when T is equal to your 8 second okay so one thing we know is that the area under vt graph the area under vt graphs so this gives us us the distance traveled okay so this gives us the distance traveled so the distance traveled for q would be the area under the vt graph of q okay so that means how much distance did q travel so this will be the distance that q traveled this area okay so this area um, will be the distance that Q traveled okay this area okay so we need to find out the area right so what is the area so the area will be half into base into height so that means Q traveled how much half into how much what is the base base extends up to 8 right so half into 8 into what is the height the height extends up to how much 40 right so that means the net distance that is traveled by Q is equal to your half into 8 into 40. So this is equal to your how much 160. Okay. And the net distance that is traveled by P. So this will be equal to the area under the VT graph of P. Right. So the area under VT graph of P can be divided into two segments. Okay. First is your a triangle. Okay. And the second is your a rectangle. Okay. So what is the net area? First of all, the area of the triangle, half into base. How much is the base? From 1 to 3, it's spanning. So 2. Okay. How much is the height? From 0 to 20, right? So 20. Okay. Now, what is the area of the triangle? Uh, the base is from 3 to 8, right? So that means 5. And the height is from 0 to 20, right? So that means 20 okay so that means the distance that is traveled by p is equal to your 20 plus 100 so this is equal to your 120 meter right so that means p and q started from the same point okay q traveled a distance of how much q traveled a distance of 160 meter okay and p traveled a distance of how much 120 meter okay so what is they are asking what is the distance between p and q when t is equal to 8 second right so that means after 8 second p travel comes to this point and q comes to this point okay so what is the distance between these two 160 minus 120 right so that means this is equal to your 40 meter so the correct option to this question that is question number six will be option number b that is 40 meter i hope you got the question now proceeding on to the next question three forces act on a block which is sliding down at a slope at a constant speed okay so w is the weight of the block okay so w it's given to be the weight of the block r is given to be the reaction force right and f is given to be the friction force okay so in this situation okay so first of all you have to keep in mind that the block is sliding down at a constant speed right so when the speed is constant when the speed is constant acceleration is equal to your zero right so that means when acceleration is equal to zero so that means what the net forces or any axis is balanced when the acceleration is zero the summation of net forces is equal to your zero right so that means option number d is correct the resultant force on the block is zero okay but we will be exploring the other options as well okay so assume this angle to be theta okay so then i just draw the free body diagram right okay so that means this is the weight that is acting downwards right and this angle will be also theta okay so this is the normal reaction that is r and that is the force of the that is acting upward right so if i just make the components of w along the plane that means this will be along the plane so that this will be this component will be w sine theta right and this component will be perpendicular to the plane that will be equal to your w cos theta right since the sum of net forces along any axis is zero i can write that 
r would be equal to your w cos theta right why because these forces should be balanced right otherwise if it is in balance then the block would not be sliding down with a constant speed okay and what should be the other thing that w sin theta should be equal to your f so that means w sin theta should be equal to your f so that means automatically these two and these two will be uh, cancelled okay and uh, excluding option number a there must be an unbalanced force down the plane no there should not be any unbalanced force why because when the unbalanced forces are there there would not be zero acceleration and if there is no zero acceleration the body will not slide down the plane uh, in a constant speed okay so that means the correct option to this question that is question number seven is option number d so proceeding on to the next question a balloon rises at a steady vertical velocity of 10 meter per second okay so there is a balloon okay there is a balloon like this uh, it rises at a vertical velocity of 10 meter per second so it's rising upward with a speed of how much 10 meter per second okay an object is dropped from the balloon at a height of 40 meter from the ground okay so there is the 40 meter okay height so when the balloon is at a height of 40 meter a object is dropped from the balloon okay suppose the object be this mass m the object is dropped from the balloon okay uh, air resistance is negligible what is the time for the object to hit the ground okay so you have to keep in mind that since the object is dropped from the balloon which was itself moving upward with the speed of 10 meter per second okay so the initial speed of the block will be also upward 10 meter per second when it is dropped from the balloon okay so that means the initial speed u is actually how much 10 meter per second okay so i am taking upwards as positive and downwards as negative okay so what is the initial speed of the block so what is the initial speed of the object it's moving upward right with a speed of 10 meter per second so it's plus okay where is gravity acting downwards right and what is acceleration due to gravity a is equal to your g but it's acting downwards right so it's minus okay so how much has the body displaced so after releasing the body from here it strikes the ground and goes down right so how much has the body displaced the body has been displaced 40 meter okay but where has it displaced it has displaced in the downward direction right it has been displaced in the downward direction so the displacement of the body is minus 40 meter right so that means we formed a parameter box that is u is equal to your 10 meter per second g is equal to your acceleration is equal to your minus g so that is minus of 10 meter per second square okay and displacement s is equal to your minus of 40 meter okay so we need to find out a time after which the object will hit the ground okay so we can apply s equal to so we can apply s equal to your ut plus half ata squared okay so what is this in the question given to be minus 40 right what is u u is given to be 10 so 10 t plus half what is acceleration acceleration is minus 10 right so minus 10 into t square right so from here we get that minus 40 is equal to your 10 t minus of 5 t square okay so from here on solving we get that 5 t square minus of 10 t minus of 40 so this should be equal to your 0 so from here we get that t square minus of 2 t minus of 8 so this is equal to your 0 so from here we get that t minus of 1 whole square i'm just solving right so minus of 3 square so this is equal to your 0 so t minus of 4 into t plus 2 this equal to your zero so that means the eligible time is t equal to your four second okay so that means the correct option to this question that is your question number eight is option number c t equal to your four seconds so proceeding on to the next question an object of mass small m okay so there is an object the mass of that object is small m strikes a vertical wall horizontally with a speed u okay so it's moving with a speed u and after some time it strikes the vertical wall okay so suppose this is the vertical wall okay the object rebounds from the wall horizontally at a speed v 
so okay so it strikes the vertical wall right and after striking the vertical wall it rebounds right the mass of m rebounds and it starts moving with a velocity v in the opposite direction so we have to find the magnitude of the change in the momentum of the object okay so what is the initial momentum of the object so this is equal to m times of u okay where is the momentum of the object initially it's towards the east right it's towards the east okay so what is the final momentum of the object mass into velocity right mass into velocity but where is the momentum final momentum it's towards the west right so it's towards the west okay so that means what is the change in the momentum so that change in momentum delta p is equal to your final momentum minus of initial momentum right so what is final momentum mv towards the west okay minus of mu towards the east okay and we know that east and west are anti parallel vectors right so east is located in this direction and west is located in the opposite direction so east and west are your anti parallel vectors right so for anti parallel vectors i can write that west is equal to your negative of east right so that means east will be equal to your negative of west i can write this for anti parallel vectors okay so that means delta p that is your change in momentum would be equal to mv towards the west minus of mu now east can be written as negative of west okay so my so west okay so minus of west okay so east can be written as negative of west right so that means in place of east i am writing negative of west okay so minus of west okay so that means the change in the momentum delta p so this will be equal to your mv towards the west plus mu towards the west so that means the change in the momentum is how much m times of v plus u towards the west okay but what do we want we want the magnitude we don't want the entire vector right we don't want the entire vector we want the magnitude right so that means what will be the magnitude so this is the direction part and this is the magnitude part right so the magnitude is m times of v plus u right m times of v plus u so the correct option to this question that is question number 9 is option number d i hope you got the question so proceeding on to the next question and horizontal force f acts on a sphere okay so first of all let be let this be the sphere okay suppose the sphere has a mass m okay so there is a horizontal force f that is acting on the sphere okay a uh, horizontal resistive force k v square acts on the sphere okay so that means where is the force acting the force is acting in this direction right the resistive force always acts opposite to the application of the force right so that means resistive force will be in this direction opposite to the direction of the force right so that means over here the force will be the resistive fr okay so i am calling the resistive force as fr okay for now which is equal to k v square given in the question okay so they are asking what is the terminal velocity of the sphere so in this question you have to keep in mind what do you mean by terminal velocity so terminal velocity means that when the body will not accelerate any further okay so that will be the final velocity for the sphere okay so that means the body is not accelerating further so that means the acceleration of the body is equal to zero right now over here if i just multiply m over here i can write that ma is equal to 0 so that means i can write that when the body reaches terminal velocity the summation of all the forces on the body is equal to your 0 right so when the body reaches terminal velocity summation of all forces on the body is equal to your 0 right so that means what will happen the net force that is acting on the body will be equal to your net resistive force right so that means f should be equal to your fr then and only then the net force will be zero right and the body will reach terminal velocity okay so what is the net force the net force is f that is acting on the body and what is the net resistive force it is equal to your kv square right given in the question so from here we can get that the constant velocity v that is the terminal velocity would be equal to your root of f by k okay so i hope you got the question the correct answer to this question is option number d so the correct option to question number 10 is option number D.